Hey folks, Craig from the Vinyl Record Player. We got Vinyl Tag 2023, so I would recommend that you buckle up. All right, and we're back. We're doing the, the 2023 Vinyl Tag. I'm, uh, I definitely watched a ton of these videos last year. It's been my first uh, vinyl tag, apologies for the hoodie, but man, this may be San Diego, but it is a cold one today, which, you know, to the rest of the world, or you're, you would be right to giggle voraciously at me, but uh, anyway, it's cold in the house, it's cold everywhere. Uh, anyway, let's get right to this, thanks to Rob Walker, who I believe is actually a subscriber. Uh, you're doing the right thing, Rob. Uh, but great questions. I just assumed I wouldn't be able to do this, because usually, mm, my collection is not as big, not big enough that I could be like, I'll do it. It's big. It's big this year. I'm big. Um, so let's go ahead with number one, which right off the hop, I start on a terrible tip by saying favorite new release of 2022. I don't have one. I don't have one. I couldn't even find a, you know, a reissue that I bought. So let's just pretend that question never happened. Go on to number two. Last band or solo artist I saw live was actually a Karanga bin. I believe maybe uh, how they, what they call them. Kind of psychedelic, kind of um, uh, funky, a uh, little bit uh, stony. Um, really fun band. I saw them in, um, in San Diego at the Outdoor Amphitheater, one of the Outdoor Amphitheaters, and uh, it was bomb. It was super fun. Went with a friend. I haven't been to uh, a gig since, and I, that was the only one I'd been through in several years. So... Uh, it was a funky choice. Um, not something I would be into, but my buddy, or actually something I might be into, to be honest. Uh, my buddy recommended it, and I'm like, ah, I'll go, I'll do it. And yeah, no, it was great. Uh, you know, good looking players, good players. Uh, and that helps. Uh, anyway, uh, let's talk about uh, first album was the best. It's a discovery from this year. Let's talk about GC Cameron. Um, this of course is love songs and other tragedy. First of all, the white suit. I mean, I, I think if you come, if you come with a white suit on your first LP, it, it can only be gangbusters or you will leave the industry quickly. GC kept going. Uh, great album, obviously on the Motown label. Um, you know what? This is my favorite work by him. Uh, a lot of, a lot of heavyweights on here in terms of production. You got Stevie Wonder. Writing songs, you got Willie Hutch writing songs, producing. Uh, really good record. Uh, not really well known in, in the VC is GC, but he should be. I mean, uh, fantastic. If you like Outkast, this dude, basically Andre 3000 ripped off GC and GC's kind of whole vibe. Key track on this one is uh, If You Don't Love Me, and you'll hear that kind of Outkasty vibe happening. Uh, so yeah, GC Cameron, uh, first album was the best, and he still does some great work beyond that. All right, uh, let's do a hat trick. Uh, whoa, already two questions off the table. Yeah, no, you know what? I haven't bought a cassette probably since uh, maybe the 90s. Um, uh, I had a lot of hip-hop cassettes. I, 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 like, I actually have a, a cassette uh, back at my parents' house. Uh, that is uh, all hip hop cassettes. I call it the hip hop graveyard. Uh, tons of like, you know, classic old school, like, you know, Queen Latifah, Special Ed, jeez, um, Master Ace, all these dudes in cassette form. I don't have them here, so I'm just gonna skip that question. I haven't bought very many compact discs, to be honest, either. Uh, so let's keep going. Uh, album that ends, starts and ends with the same letter. This was difficult. I almost went uh, a gentleman named uh, Stylus Meets Vinyl. Great channel. If, you, if you've not seen his channel, you, you should check it out. Uh, anyway, uh, he, he did the Days of Future Past. This is not as easy as it looks, but let's go with an uh, album that starts and ends with the same letter. Here's a pro tip. Live at Carnegie Hall, pretty much any band. LL. Uh, this is Renaissance. And that is one dollar I spent for this record that's almost in like mint condition. Uh, excellent band, um, beautiful gatefold, one dollar, Renaissance Live at, at Carnegie Hall. I think it, this is probably a very good introduction. Um, you, you know, if, if, you, uh, 
it's really well recorded. It's, it's a great record. Renaissance is great, but they have a huge catalog. And this kind of acts, acts as somewhat of a, you know, kind of a, a greatest hits of sorts. So Renaissance, uh, live at Carnegie Hall. Oh, born in the same year as me. <sighs> Hate to say it, but that would have been 1974, but just by a few days. <sighs> yeah, that's right. Getting older. Talk about Frankie Miller's High Life. This is the second, um, I think this is a U.S. version. The, the British version of this album is basically, it's got him and he's got like a big, hey, hey, kind of smile on the front. Um, I mean, you know, he, he looks great, et cetera, et cetera. But um, for some reason, they released this in the States. This is produced by Alan Toussaint. Uh, if you like Bob Seger, like at all, at all, at all, I'll say that a hundred times fast. Um, you'll probably like uh, Frankie Miller. Very similar sort of uh, rock and soul uh, vocals. Alan Toussaint produces. It's a fantastic record. I think it's his best record. Uh, and it's also from 1974, as I am. And most listened to album in 2022. I did a digital uh, thing not too long ago uh, about this, but Soul Portrait, Willie Hutch. Definitely have listened to this the most. Uh, I've said it once. I will repeat it because uh, I have passion for it. Uh, I think this is the uh, one of the top three best soul LPs of the 1960s. Uh, if it's, if you move that date over to 70, which some places they, they call it released in 70, uh, I don't believe that, uh, then less so. It's maybe in the top 10, but great, very 60s soul, uh, sound, but very complete. Willie is just, he's riffing all over the album. Man can't stop singing. Uh, he, he takes a note and he just beats it, uh, into a funky, funky submission. Anyway, uh, yeah, Soul Portrait, Willie Hutch, great one. Uh, most listened to artists in 22, 22, oh, is that also Willie Hutch? Is this, is this fully exposed from 1973 on the Motown label? Yeah, it is. I kind of had a hutch off this year. Uh, really had never really known him before, but um, once I got hutched, uh, I was hooked. Uh... This album is his best 70s work. Uh, wow, really great re record. Uh, key tracks, man, it's all over here, but tell me why has our love gone cold? Just listen to the intro to that, friends. Just the intro alone and you'll be like, if you're, if, if you're like not moved by that, then man, I don't know what to say about you. Australian artist of band, this is a struggle for me, but uh, fortunately I, I, I had an old ass. Highway to Hell record, original pressing, I'm sure, produced by Robert Lang. They're the boys on the back. Um, I don't have a lot to say about this record, but I do own it, and it is a, a veritable classic. All right. Um, okay, su surprising purchase of uh, 2022. This is going to be a double shot. Jerry Butler. Offering the Spice of Life. Uh, this album is epic. It's one of my favorite picks of 2022. Uh, I love it. It's just a lot of orchestral soul. Uh, kind of longer songs heading into the five minute area, but, but a lot of classics. Uh, Jerry is just absolutely at his peak on this record. Uh, it's, it's a huge favorite. Uh, so I'm going to call that uh, really the surprising purchase because I just didn't think that I would love this double soul LP from 1972 as much as I do. But, uh, you know, that's what they call life, friends. Let's uh, let's move on to uh, uh, an, an album, a band album that I'm complete on. I'm not a completist, you know. Uh, I, I uh, was going to do a series, and I may still, called uh, If You Gotta Have One. Uh, meaning there's a lot of artists with a lot of records, but I feel like there's a lot of artists where, you know, you have one one out you can get away with it no, no one's gonna cry no one's gonna die uh but at any rate uh so this was an easy one uh not really but easy because the artists i was in a country rock for a little bit a couple years ago this is rick roberts windmills uh you know rick roberts uh this is kind of a, kind of a fun album just like 
Uh, Rick Roberts, uh, he kind of took over uh, a little bit when Graham Parsons left, left the Flying Burrito Brothers. Uh, so he was really only on kind of the live album and, and I think their last, uh, the self-titled, which is kind of really my favorite. Everyone's always like, Graham Parsons, man, he's the only burrito singer. And I'm like, mm, I like the Rick work too. Um, so anyway, this is a solo. Uh, what's notable about this is that um, a lot of other players, uh, the, the Eagles are on this. Uh, I think uh, Al Perkins, uh, the, the pedal steel master. Um, a lot of the guys from Manassas and stuff on this album. This one's pretty good. Um, the second one from 73, She Is A Song, uh, also good. Um, this one, Glad To Be Going, is a classic. On this one, one of the best songs that you've never heard is In My Own Small Way. And tell me why the hell 80,000 country artists never covered that and made Rick a very rich man. They should have. Um, anyway, there's this, and believe it or not, this is just, I mean, come on. Maybe not the best of Rick Roberts, because look, because look at that van. I mean, that van says... Oh, and then, you know, we got them. That's probably somewhere in Colorado. He's from Colorado. Uh, beauty. That's just epically 70s, in, in my opinion. Um, and it's an okay, you know, best of. Nothing new on it or anything like that. Uh, okay, so let's uh, move on. Next question. A great run of three albums as continuing uh, my secret uh, sponsorship from hashtag Big Jerry. Gotta go with... Um, Jerry Butler sings assorted songs, sounds, uh, with the aid of assorted friends and relatives. Super over-the-top long title. Should have cut it down a bit, but this is kind of one of the albums that kind of got me going with the Jerry situation. I love it. What a record. Sagittarius Movement would follow quickly, maybe like six months later, uh, and uh, also a great record. And then, whoa, whoa, second appearance... Jerry, Spice of Life, um, three albums within like a period of like a year and a half, two years. The guy also released the, the soundtrack for Melinda. And it wasn't just, oh, Jerry's on a track. He's like all over that LP. So this guy just was like, and I think in maybe 72, also might have been 73. Also another duets record with Brenda Lee Eager. But uh, anyway, this is... A genius three albums. If you could only have three Jerry Butler albums, those would be them. Okay, uh, 80s soundtrack. I am gonna cheat, but I'm you know I'm trying, right? I mean I've already missed two questions because you know I just I just don't have the resources. But uh, 80s soundtrack. I know it's not a soundtrack, but I'm told by friends of mine who have watched the show, and you know I read a little popular culture. I'm, I'm not just sitting here in my cave. Uh, this is, uh, apparently, uh, The Stranger Things. Uh, one of the people has a cassette of Hounds of Love, and they keep playing it. So I'm gonna go with that, uh, because I don't have any 80s soundtrack. I don't really have soundtracks. I maybe have two. Uh, and, uh, I am looking towards getting into the more black exploitation type of soundtracks, but soundtracks usually leave me pretty ice cold. So, uh, yeah, let's move on. Uh, we are going to be lost in 2022. R.I.P. Sil Johnson. This, of course, this is uh, 1969, 70 LP. Is it because I'm black? Um, genuine classic. Sil Johnson, genuine, uh, you know, just uh, sort of iconoclast, I guess, of sorts. No, except that nobody had ever heard of this guy. Um, great documentary. If you get an opportunity uh, to, you got a couple hours. Look for a Sill Johnson documentary. Um, hilariously good. He's a funny character. Uh, but again, Sill Johnson, worthy of looking into all of his 70s work. Minus he does a final kind of disco album in, in 79. Eh, you could avoid that. Uh, but Sill Johnson, RIP, I think it was February 2022. Lost a bit of a, a bit of a legend. A bit of a legend. All right, uh, let's talk about a disappointing purchase. Now, first off, uh, I got two, but uh, if you, have you seen my channel before, I have a series called To the Garage With Your. And that's usually where I put all my disappointing uh, sort of purchases. Uh, but I'm gonna call this one out just the hell of it, and that is, I believe, uh, Solon 
by uh, Dionne Warwick from 1968. She looks smoldering on the cover. Like, I'm like, whoa, Dion Dionne's never looked better. But then she proceeds to do all of these covers of soul songs that are just owned by other artists. Like, being like, hey, I'm Dionne Warwick. I can do what I want. But it's like, no, you can't. Come on, Dionne. You don't do a cover of a bunch of legendary co uh, songs that don't need to be covered, which is exactly what it was. But this one, you know, this one is, is a bit of a downbeat too. I just got this, uh, you know, on a, when I was on a trip home. And I mean, look at, look at this label. This is on the uh, Today label. It's all like peace. And look at these guys, they're cool as hell. And then we look on the back and we're like, oh my God, how cool are they? I don't think they could be much cooler. It's not a very good record. Not a very good record. I was kind of shocked. This was a funk my soul uh, kind of pick. And when I saw it in the wild, I was like, this is a beauty. It's a minor rock and soul LP. Uh, you know, again, despite this, this tremendous artwork, uh, the Brockingtons, no. I, I say no to you, Mr. and Mrs. Brockington. Um, let's find a grail. Right here, right here, baby. Been a while. Seed of memory. Uh, finally found this towards the end of the year. Terry Reed, you gotta have this, or you gotta hear it. There's, uh, it's not widely available streaming, but you can hear it on YouTube. Try to find this album, listen to it, and then begin your quest for this grail. Uh, space themed album, Sleep or Song. I'm gonna go with Song. It was, this was not tough. I'm not really into the space scene, but, uh, on Made in Japan by Deep Purple, we have Space Truckin'. Uh, it's been a while since I've listened to this one, but this one's a big, giant, crazy rock live album. Uh, it's great stuff. Um, oh, you know what I missed? I'll go back, but uh, non-vinyl purchase. Yeah, that's right. I'm not even going to edit this. Come on. Come on. Um, only the Strong Survive. It's a book by Jerry Butler, uh, with Earl Smith. So, uh, Jerry tells the story, Earl writes the words. I've not read it yet, but I'm, I'm excited. Uh, hashtag, Big Jerry. And, uh, yeah, uh, show some VCLT or a present. I do not have a VCLT. However, I do have a present that I received at Christmas from my aunt, Bill Withers Live, at Carnegie Hall, also, um, yeah, uh, yes, live at, Car I'm going to call it live at Carnegie Hall. Yeah, I'm starting to wonder if I was even correct on the, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, and then oh, we're capping it off. Wow, this is going to be a heck of a video. I hope we still have some stragglers. Um, show an album released in 1973. This is all my brothers, brothers and sisters. Um, Beautiful cover. I actually uh, got a gift certificate from my sister, and I proceeded to buy this. Uh, we were both fans, and it's such a such beautiful artwork on this. And then, are you ready for the coolest photograph of 1973? Whoa, whoa, my friends! There is a lot of rock in this here particular uh, photo. I guess that's the Almond Brothers and Fam. Um, really, really cool stuff. This is be the, the uh, first album following Dwayne Allman's untimely uh, passing, uh, but great one. Um, basically, uh, the, the man um, bets. Uh, Dickie bets? I think that's right. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, he kind of takes over, uh, and they don't drop a you know a, a notch in quality. Uh, biggest hit is on this, Ramblin' Man, of course. It's important to note that uh, no other uh, Allman Brothers song sounds like Ramblin' Man. Uh, but, again, very good. I think Southbound Train is on this one, too. Yeah, Southbound is. Jessica. Uh, great album. So, yeah, that was it. Thanks to Rob Walker uh, and uh, for putting this out. Uh, I'm very pleased that this is the first time I've, I've done this. So, yeah, uh, likes. Subscribes, comment, please. I'd love to hear uh, your thoughts. Uh, but otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.